here. Episode 20 of the podcast today. We actually have a topic that we planned a week ahead. We got the uh, Chris D'Elia No Pain special that we'll be speaking about. Just giving our thoughts on the bits. Um, one of my favorite comedians, a uh, person I study about comedy for, a very physical comedian. A um, uh, person that I showed um, Mike to, and he pretty much binge watched him in a weekend. Well, that was going to be like my question was how did you how did you find Crystalia in the first place? Because like I have like a story, and I'm sure you have a story. Uh, honestly, I feel like I've wa- I've seen him. I saw him on, like random TV shows before, mm-hmm. and one day I was like looking at comedy, like oh I didn't even know this guy does comedy, so I watched his um, Encourageable special, okay. and then I was like oh I like this, and then and then uh, there's podcasts to listen to. One's called Fighter and the Kid, and I then I've and then I think uh, I think he did two episodes on Joe Rogan, but oh, there goes a cat, obviously. Um, but Fighter and a Kid, he's pretty funny. He's like his, one of his best friends, Brian Callen's on there, and they like riff back and forth all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's like amazing. It's like I wish I had a friend like that <laughs> to like joke around with. Like mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it. If you want to search up Brian Callen, Crystalia, and there's like just jokes of them going just back and forth. So there you go. That's how I that's how I knew about Crystalia. Okay, because when, like for me, um, I didn't like you may have mentioned him once or something, but I know for for like the first time I heard that name was uh, that one WrestleMania weekend where someone had a friend that looked like him, and so the whole weekend everyone kept calling him Crystalia, and I didn't know that name, but then I was like, oh okay, he's a comedian, um, and then you said like, oh yeah, like he's like you know one of my favorite comedians, and then. Fast forward to, I want to say it was around a year ago, uh, around this time a year ago, um, he tweeted, um, like he quote tweeted something about wrestling and he was just like, but it's fake. Like, and the wrestling Twitter, like wanted him on a pedestal and were throwing stuff at him like, what do you know? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, like you suck. Like, you don't know wrestling. Wrestling is this. And like. I, everyone was going nuts about it and everyone on my timeline like couldn't get enough of like you know like yelling at him and like saying oh and defending pro wrestling and I took it as you know what I've heard of this guy before I know Justin's a big fan I'm gonna check this guy out and from there I watched both of his Netflix specials one of them the first one that I watched it took me um, double the time to watch it because every time like he would do a bit I had to pause it and laugh and catch my breath walk around a little bit take a lap and then click play again because it's so funny you had to digest the special oh i couldn't like i i couldn't stop laughing i legitimately couldn't stop laughing and that's why i had to pause it because i didn't want to miss anything so um what many people took as a negative uh, i took as a positive out of that one little tweet about wrestling being fake um and then obviously here we are today talking about this months later months later he tweets this guy's my favorite wrestler, aka Orange Cassidy. Oh yeah, yeah. And so, AEW like um, quoted him and put like a like a like, like a, a hmm. joke in there, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, so AEW knows. Yeah. So there you so, go. Big fans. Maybe of we'll the... see him. Maybe we'll see him. On, what's it called? Like, do a spot with Orange Cassidy or something. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully in their Vegas or I don't know. Well, he lives in LA. I don't know. We'll see one day. Yeah. But there you go. So we. But by the way, before we get into this, what'd you do today? I literally just watched this. I just I just watched this. Like that's the only thing that's important. Everything else I can't talk about right now. Okay, so the DL. I worked out for an hour, walked the dog for half an hour, um, and did some stocks. I'm down for seventy five dollars, but it's fine, dude. Because before it goes down, then I'll just come right back up. Unless Air Canada goes bankrupt, which is fine, dude. If it makes you feel better, my um, my in-game stocks, which is turnips in Animal Crossing, um, me and Matt Beast haven't found a good price yet. And uh, basically, you buy them on Sunday, and you like need to sell them sometime during the week. And so far, they are way under what we paid. So we're basically, me and you, Justin, are basically in the same spot. We both are losing money. But I've invested two grand, and you invested time but it's fine it's fine dude it's fine we could, our next podcast will be about stocks anyway continue stocks uh that's pretty much it and looking at stocks and looking at random stuff and watching that special 
Oh, I watched that part two of that movie. Um, P.S. I love you. There you mm-hmm. go. I watched that. It's pretty good. Can't wait for um, it to come out next year. So, okay, and in, in, in all honesty, the other stuff that I did today was um, I listened to the podcast, uh, KFC Radio. It's a Barstool podcast. They had Chris D'Elia on, so I wanted to hear what they were going to talk about. Um, and then from there, I listened to another Barstool podcast who had one of the um, guitar players for All Time Low. And they're kind of like friends. So, like, that's always a fun time when, like, you know, the guest and the host are both, like, you know, close. Um, and then he talked about going to the Home Alone house um, in that uh, podcast and how, like, there was, like, a documentary they did a long time ago. So then I looked for that documentary and I found a 240p version on Vimeo that was uploaded 10 years ago. And I watched that whole thing. It was an hour and 16 minutes. So that's why I didn't get a chance to watch what was it? special until them, now them two going to the house no no no, no. like like the, the the guy who's in the band was in a podcast with a barstool guy and the barstool guy mentioned how the guy who was in a band years years ago in the documentary that they made went to the home alone house because home alone is his favorite movie so that made me want to watch it because i never watched the documentary gotcha okay crystalia no pain all right, okay. so here we go. What do you think overall? It should have been long, like it should have been longer. Um, but like, cause I, that was the only thing I saw going into it was that it was um, like it was only 56 minutes, and I was like, oh man, I wish it was longer. But then watching it, I kept checking the time, and I was like, I feel like we've gone like an hour and a half. Like there was so much stuff packed into one 56 minute um, special, and I was like, like I thought it was gonna be like stretched out. But that was perfect. I loved it. It was awesome. Like, it was kind of like a culmination of, like, past stuff for me because it's like, like, I, I saw, like, I feel like the, the last two specials had some, like, you know, connections to each other. But this one was, like, totally, like, brand new. Like, there was nothing that I, like, heard of, him, like, from him before. Um, the one thing that I was interested on, if he was going to mention the Eminem thing. And the only mention of it is the fact that he had the song in the beginning for the intro and the be- or in the end for the outro. Um, so that was, like, cool because it was, like, it was there, but he didn't, like, you know, like, say it to me or talk about it a lot. Or, you know what I mean? Just, he just played it. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm in a song. This is my intro. Yeah, by the way, here it is. And I did watch the credits so I could listen to the rest of the song, but they, they stopped it before the, the, the using way too many napkins line, um, which should be a T-shirt. I don't know why it's on a T-shirt. Anyway, I thought it was awesome. Um, there's nothing bad I could say about it. Like, you know, obviously, like, you might have, like, saw something as, like, a, a student of the game, but, like, I there's literally nothing I can say bad about it. It was so great. I was going to say, um, the reason they do – before he said he did long specials, but um, like one of special like an hour and 20 minutes, but people don't have the attention span. Since you're a fan now, you'll watch the whole thing, but most people don't have the attention span for it. So they hit that hour. I mean, actually they try to put their, most comedians now are trying to put the best stuff in the first 20 minutes. Cause after most people don't watch, stop watching comedy after 25 minutes. Yeah. For Netflix. Oh no, that, that that's definitely not me. And like the, like just the fact that he like connected all the stuff like from the beginning like that he talked about yeah, and he connected into the end a lot of callback oh, it was so good and there was like obviously there was new bits um he had like new voices like he kind of like when he was doing yep. the different like characters in the bits his, his kid voice definitely morphed oh it was it was something else and like um I, like the one thing I kept thinking of, like each time he did a new voice, was um, like the show Rick and Morty. Um, Rick and Morty are voiced voiced by the same person. Um, it would be interesting if Crystalia ever like voiced an entire show or like an entire cartoon or something, because um, like he can do all the characters and have all these different voices. So I wrote down all the bips, bips, bits. So opening bit was doing comedy and bombing bit, which I enjoyed. It's that true. was like a little like peel back the curtain kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, the baby bit of him oh grinning God. at him. A... <laughs> this baby bit, like. Like, that was a great opening bit, and it came back at the end. That was amazing. Just, 
just him saying babish like just the way he says it was like funny but then like the entire time i could imagine him at the store or at the mall or whatever and then i could just see like a ba- like just a baby like staring at him and then like him thinking all this and like the baby just like staring at him like i could i could picture that this happens to me literally all the time ever cuz i'm it's so relatable, tall. yeah children literally stare at me and everyone will be like oh well, the kid's staring at me like, yeah, yeah yeah i know it's been happening to me for like forever i mostly wave all the time um just because it's like it's a baby like what do they know and like he just he like in this bit he he like went on about the baby but then at some points like he kind of like branched off and like we talk about something else and like just with like podcasts that's the best that's the best stuff is when you have one thing and you could branch off about different things in that one thing. And then it makes it like a complete, like, you know, complete podcast, complete bit, whatever. Supreme bit. I pop for people wearing Supreme head to toe. <laughs> yeah. Um, talking about his childhood is so good. That's where no pain came from. That was great. Cause he like did the reverse, like, Oh, everyone complains about their childhood. My childhood was great. Um, don't do drugs. Or a drink. That's a relatable bit, which I kind of what I'm right. I I have a bit like that, not th- like that, but like the intro to that bit was like something I wrote because that's so relatable to me. Mm-hmm. And he, but he just took a different turn with that. Yeah, that was great. He addressed being white, like just being a white guy. Is like, oh, my life's so easy being white. Is like, oh, like he didn't complain. He was just like, oh, it's great. Like I don't understand. Like why would I not be white? Like that was funny. The best, the best stuff is always like in, in any comedy for me is always like talking about the stuff that people don't think that you should talk about. That's always the best stuff. Well, like, that's, uh, a, that's, that's what people go see comedy for. You you have to, you talk about the stuff that you can't say exactly, and, and you make it funny. Yeah, and that's like the one thing where I was like, um, just because of the kind of person he is, I knew that he would take that and run with it, and that's what he did in this, and that's why I was like, you know, I had so much fun watching it um dick bit where he's like oh don't think of your dick even ever <laughs> or if you have an x-men superpower like imagine that like 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 the worst superpower of all time like oh yeah oh i know when to pull it out or not <laughs> like that was amazing because i actually have a bit of how much i spit too much x fake x-men superpower is how much oh, yeah. you spit too much. I thought of uh, Dwight from The Office when he's talking about, or when he brought in all his friends for the the job, and um, like that one guy said he went to X Men school. Like that's the first thing I thought of when he talked about like that X Men bit. Oh, think of The Office. Remember when Jim pretends he has powers and moves the coat rack? Oh yeah, and Pam is just doing it with the the umbrella. Uh, yeah, yeah. Airdrop, airdrop was good. It's just oh, like, dude. I have- that was the trailer, and, like, I was waiting for it. I honestly forgot about it until he started to say it, and I was like, oh, yeah, this was, like, the trailer. And then he extended on it, and, like, obviously, you know, the trailer isn't, like, everything. So, like, that was, like, the one little thing that, like, really drew me in because I was like, that's something that people do, and it's, like, the funniest thing. And I don't know how people still don't turn off that feature that everybody can send you stuff because that's, like, that's a thing. Like he said, like, Apple, like, like, so many pictures exist like why are you gonna like you just have this feature <laughs> so i saw chris Delia live in september 2018 so the last part of the act i remember very clearly like the last two bits uh-huh. and so i was like uh it was funnier he had a different approach to that dolphin bit and i feel like <laughs> i don't know when you're when you're there live it's funnier because you're there to laugh so it's oh easier. yeah They say, like, when you record comedy, like, 70%. If you're really good, like, 70% of it translates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I can can attest to that because when I saw the Impractical Jokers, I literally laughed the entire time. Where, like, watching the show, like, I laugh, like, a lot of the stuff, but it's not as much as I was there. It's, like, it's something in the air, you know what I mean? Like, it's like they pump in, like, laughing gas almost. It's because you pay there. You're going, you're, like, you're there to laugh. Yeah. And you're with people, so... Like if I if we watch a comedy together, it's way more funny than if we watch it by ourselves mm-hmm. because like we're just there laughing together. It's always yeah. funny than like by yourself. If one person thinks it's funny, then a bunch of people will think it's funny, kind of thing. Also, if you have like a person that has like a funny laugh, like you'll you have more. Like my cousin will laugh, and I swear to God, like it makes 
Like we watched the movie once and like the theater was laughing. And, like that's yeah. funny. But he just has like, you know, people have that. This is a funny laugh. laugh. Yeah. yeah. And like the one thing in this um, special is like, I mean, he like r- uh, the way he like does his like, you know, movements on stage. Like he really like honed his talent of movements on stage in this one. Like, the, you know, like the past two, like, like he had his like set ones that he would do like but this one he really like went all in and like went crazy with it and it was just it was just great so dolphin bit was amazing that was uh it's like that was something oh yeah. if you guys fuck dolphins and then who fucks dolphins here no one ever and i'm, there, I'm waiting for one person to say like no. oh yeah <laughs> oh man and kept making fun of Boulder, Colorado. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah, I was like, that's such a random like thing, but like, yeah, it's like Boulder, Colorado. Okay, like I, I'm in. Like you got me on that one. Like, that's like when people make jokes about Kansas. It's like, oh, it's Kansas, you know? Yeah. And then he has a bit about everyone getting offended at comedy, and then it was like, all right, so I'm just not gonna do comedy. And he made a, he made a bad bit into a good bit. Like it's a good bit, but it's like a fake bad bit. That makes it, but it's funny, mm-hmm. which was good. And then the uh, the uh, shit in your pants, I'm so confident bit. <laughs> so when I, I saw that bit live, he said when he did that bit to us, that was like the longest driving improv that he's ever done on a show. And I was like laughing because how funny it was when I saw it live. So when I saw it again, I didn't find it as funny, but I remember it being like, funny like hilarious laughing the first time yeah, yeah that yeah. was one, that was one where i was like i like this is funny but if i was there i'd be dead like i'd be dying right. laughing like and, and i knew the punch i knew the turn was coming like each um what's it called like well because yeah he says that and he's like like you know the, like at the beginning he's like you know you you know the end of the joke like <laughs> <laughs> two blocks one block so there you go. We just, just reviewed a. We just pretty much suspense. spoiled the bit. We spoiled all the bits, but you know what? Whatever. Like if, if okay, you... here's the thing. Like, <laughs> like the title of this has to be "Go Watch the New Crystalia Special." That's the title of this because, like, if someone listened to this and they they didn't watch the thing first, like that's on them. Like, you should have watched it. You should watch it again because it's just that good. Like, I thought about watching it now or like when I when I did, and then like watching it right after, like just back to back like watching it yeah. over again because then, cause then you, you catch the in-betweens like there's a yeah. lot of random saying that he's, he probably says that you miss because you just watched it the first like you watch the first time you absorb it but you don't absorb everything lots of uh, lots of gift worthy moments that could be used in this one for sure especially the dolphin the dolphin and the, the drive-in when it's like the dolphin and then um, when he talks about um, when he talks about everybody like if you line up everybody like on the one side of the street in a straight line and then they cross like everyone's gonna get there at the same time like with those faces that he made during that i was like, like oh like, uh that we was... all the races <laughs> <laughs> and then like he like during that too he was like um like he was like but it's a joke like it's a joke and then he was like ah <laughs> like like was it a joke like that's i don't know it's it's just it's like a bit but it's not a bit it's so good like that i mean that was i gotta go i'm just gonna i'm gonna go watch it again like i'm gonna go watch it again after this just because it's like there you go so if you haven't figured out by now go watch that special and if you haven't watched any specials go watch all three of them yeah go watch all three they're they're all on netflix and if you want to watch his og special go find that was it white no what is it uh white men black comic i think and if you want to know what's going on with his life and the world and stuff like that and his comments on the world, he's got a podcast called Congratulations with Chris Talia. There you go. There we go. We just gave, uh, you plug, know, plug unsolicited like 40, advertisement. You just plug 40 minutes. people to go follow a comedian that has millions of followers, but it's fine. It's okay. Back in the day, we used to do that all the time. It's like, hey, like, subscri- a YouTuber with, like, 10 subscribers, hey, everybody go subscribe to Stevie Breach and Assault and Battery, you know what I mean? Because then you can say, hey, give a shout out to at CV Breach in the, this video. And then he sees it and like, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, it's all the things. So just like the title says, and Justin better put the title as this, go watch the Chris D'Elia special. That's I'll it. I'll put the Chris D'Elia no pain live reaction. I'll put that in the comment. Watch that special before you watch this. Yeah, I mean, 
Just go watch it. That's the end. That's that's the thing right there. Go watch it. Yeah, Justin, go you got watch. anything else to say? Uh, I got to record some bits after this and send it to some people. All right. We'll have fun with that. Um, there you go. Until tomorrow. Yeah.